Committee will come to order. Good morning and thank you all for being here. Imagine for a moment that you had a special software on your computer that exposed many of the files on your hard drive to searches by other people. At any time your computer is connected to the internet, other computer users with similar software could simply search your hard drive and copy unprotected files. Unfortunately, that is a sad reality for many unsuspecting computer users. Peer-to-peer -peer file sharing software like LimeWire works in just that way. Most people who use peer-to-peer -peer software do it to download music and movies over the internet. And most people who use it are totally unaware that they are, may expose some of the most private files on their computers to being downloaded by others. Nine years ago, this committee first held a hearing that revealed that government commercial and private information was being stolen by peer-to-peer file-sharing networks, unbeknowing to the users. In response to congressional pressure, the file-sharing software industry agreed to regulate itself, implementing a code of conduct to address inadvertent file-sharing. The efforts failed. Two years ago, at our July 24, 2007 hearing, LimeWire's CEO, Mark Gorton, expressed surprise that sensitive personal information was available through LimeWire. He pledged to address the problem. That effort failed. Over the last year alone, there have been several reports of major security and privacy breaches involving LimeWire, information about electronics for the President's Marine One helicopter, and financial information belonging to Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer were leaked on LimeWire. LimeWire does not deny those reports, but claims that recent changes to the software prevents inadvertent file sharing. To investigate LimeWire's assertion, the committee staff downloaded and explored LimeWire's software. The staff found copyrighted music and movies, federal tax returns, government files, medical records, and many other sensitive documents on the LimeWire network. Security experts from Tiversa found major problems. Specific examples of recent LimeWire leaks range from appalling to shocking. The Social Security numbers and family information for every master sergeant in the Army had been found on LimeWire. The medical records of some 24,000 patients of a Texas hospital were inadvertently released and most of the files are still available on LimeWire. FBI files, including surveillance photos of an alleged mafia hitman, were leaked while he was on trial and before he was convicted. We were astonished to discover that a security breach involving the Secret Service resulted in the leak of a file on LimeWire containing a safe house location for the first family. As far as I'm concerned, the days of self-regulation should be over for the filing, file sharing industry. In the last administration, the Federal Trade Commission took a see no evil, hear no evil approach to file sharing software industry. I hope the new administration is revisiting that approach and I hope to work with them on how to better protect the privacy of consumers. Today, I look forward to hearing from our witnesses on the impact of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, and in particular, how LimeWire proposes to help remedy the problems caused by its software. <clears throat> I now yield five minutes to the ranking member, Congressman Darrell Issa of California. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I think as both of us are saying in various ways, today is clearly deja vu all over again. Two years ago, July 2007, 
This committee brought to light in a vivid but e altogether too easy to demonstrate demonstration that, in fact, over this peer-to-peer -peer network, by design, or at least by knowing and allowing, unwitted share, un unwitting sharing of personal information over this peer-to-peer -peer was, in fact, not just going on, but well known and going on in a rampant way. I remember all too well the details of the, the documents, including Social Security number, of a soldier with the 101st Airborne and his colleagues. Those Social Security numbers were there for everyone. Name, rank, Social Security number, date and place of birth, and of course, anything and everything one would need to capture his identity and his colleagues. It's very clear that little has changed. In preparation for this hearing, we noted that there was a brand new version, a version that in fact at least went part of the way toward protecting inadvertent uh, loss of documents. But I say part of the way because, as you can imagine, in the world of the Internet, we assume that you are protected unless you give up those protections. Not so of, true of this software. This software required essentially for copyrighted works that you opt in to, in fact, protecting software rather than have to knowingly uh, make copyrighted software available. You simply don't check and never again will we have to worry about your, cop uh, your copy or someone else's copyrighted software being available to everyone. The